Uh, so if you... perfect. This is where it'll take me a few seconds because I'm brutal at this stuff here. Um, so. Okay, so uh, hello everybody and welcome to Presence in an Online Teaching Environment. My name is uh, Tom Farley. Um, I'm in the newly established Munster Technological University and I'm delighted to say our presenter is Lee Graves Wolf and uh, the Twitter handles are there. As I said, this is part of the National Forum uh, seminar series. Um, so as I said, we just wanted to, one or two things you have, uh, you should have a, a link. Uh, that was sent out. So, uh, but our, myself and Lee and the forum would appreciate if, when this is all over, the, that you just went a, a few minutes then onto the uh, the survey and just and just gave us some feedback there. Uh, also, as I said, if you're in the Twitterati, um, if you could um, possibly just sort of uh, do any tweets or photographs, anything you want, just using the at Forum TL and the National Forum Seminar um, hashtag as well. So just anything there that, that, that you're going to do. So, and before then we uh, kick off then, I'll just, I shall just now have to just uh, share the short video I've been asked to just share. And it's gas uh, for all this stuff about online teaching and stuff there like that. Um, when I'm actually doing this in front of my peers, I get really, really nervous and all the fluidity and all of the other stuff just sort of stops a little bit here. So I just bring up this video now a second. I'm just rapidly sort of trying to kill a few seconds till I get this going. No, and I think you still have to share the screen, Tom. Stop the share. Okay, so I now, thank you very much. So I now just have to... Um, Share screen. Yes, here we go. No, no, we won't. I'll stop that because I have to click on the audio. This is going to look really bad in the video. I hope somebody okay, we'll, we'll in edit form can edit it. Out. Okay. Thanks very much. And without any further ado, I'll stop on my Gavin and uh, hand over to our esteemed presenter today, Lee Graves Wolf. Thanks very much. Thank you, Tom. And thank you, everyone, for joining me this morning, afternoon. I don't think it's evening yet. It might be evening. Is it evening in Indonesia at this point? Um, it's amazing to have um, a, a global audience here with some familiar names and new names to me. And we'll get a chance to know each other over the next hour and a half or so as we're getting started. But I'd like to start as I'm taking a minute to pull up some slides and get things started um, to just check in with all of you and see how you're feeling today. Um, there's a lot going on in the world right now and you might be feeling a mix of all of these things and I should have put in all of the above um, option, but let's see how you're feeling and that will help me help you as we're working together um, this more this day. How about that? Um, as I get my slides ready to come up here, it looks like for the most part, not too bad, which is good. Um, tired, I'm with you in the tired category as well, but we've got a, a great group here. Um, and we'll see how the um, next hour and a half 
plays out. I had originally planned, as Tom had mentioned, for 150 people, but I'm actually a little bit happier that we're a smaller group. It gives us more of a chance to interact with each other, um, especially given our topic, which is presence in an online teaching environment. And you can see here, I'm trying out a new fun feature in Zoom surrounding presence. Hopefully you're seeing me floating somewhere in the middle of the slides and the screens at the moment. If not, let me know in the chat. Um, and um, first, I would like to very much thank, um, I actually should say Gorev Magoyev. Hopefully I said that correct. I am working on my Irish. Um, and a big thank you to Munster Technological University, the National Forum, and Tom for this invitation to be with you all um, today. If you don't know about the National Forum, um, I'll post a link here in the, um, in the chat that links to all of the upcoming um, seminars that are coming up and there are zillions of them. So if you're looking for any sort of professional development, they're all um, open and available and a tremendous um, amount of resources on there. And additionally, the other thing I will share in the slides here is the um, coveted link to the slides that contains all of the resources that I'll be sharing with you today. And you, you will need that link because there will be some work um, that we'll be doing um, with each other based upon the slides. So we're, this is us right now. This is where we're present. Many of you are in Ireland. I tried to kind of zoom it up there, but we were all together um, across the globe today. And I thought um, if we have, if you wanna be a bit playful with me and try something that I haven't tried before, I'm putting myself on the, the spot at the moment. I thought we could use Zoom to have a little bit of fun and place ourselves on the map. So at the moment, you should see a map of the world. And if you look at your um, toolbar in Zoom, you should have the option to annotate. Um, you should see at the very top, you're looking at Lee's screen um, and there should be an option to pop down and you can draw, I would love for you to draw a circle or write where you are in the world at the moment. So we can sort of see where we are. And look at that. Yes, I popped out Ireland to make it a little bit easier, but um, assuming that that's where most of our audience was coming from. <laughs> But this is a nice way we've got Patricia, hi Patricia, down in Brazil. And we've I'm got- I'm in Chile. Or oh, Chile, sorry, I knew you were in Chile. <laughs> <laughs> no, this um, is such a cool tool, Lee. I love this annotation. It's really neat. I just learned about it the other day. I mean, I'm, it's been around for a while, but um, the other neat thing that I can do is I can save this. So once we have a minute here and I see kind of things starting to die down, I can um, save this image uh, as a PNG file. And then I've got that as an artifact of the day as well. And you can annotate using Zoom um, anything, anything that's on my screen. So I'm going to, um, looks like we had fun. And the other thing you can do too, is I can turn on or off. I had your um, names of annotators popping up, but you can turn that feature off. Um, so this is in addition to the whiteboard tool that is in um, Zoom. So I, I saved that image um, and people are finding stamps now. I see the hearts coming up in Michigan. We truly have an amazing global audience this morning. So I'm going to stop share. I'm not going to end meeting. I almost did that. That would have been a bit of a disaster. <laughs> we don't wanna start things off that way. But let me go back um, to my slides now that we have an idea of where we all are and how we're feeling this morning. And I'll get into the, um, the presentation. It's preparing. So this is another new feature of Zoom. Um, if you have the latest edition that allows you to have the slides as your background and yourself sort of floating over the slides. And I have found it 
um, as I've been practicing, a bit easier to use. I've always found the controls in Zoom a bit um, tricky when I'm trying to manage talking to 50 people and keeping an eye on chat and this and that. Right now, what I'm seeing is the slides and it allows me to click through um, at the bottom of the screen while maintaining all of the Zoom controls, which is kind of nice. So the plan for this morning or day is to um, begin with a, um, a definition of presence and then um, to discuss sort of my view on presence, what I mean by it, um, have a little bit of crack, uh, collaborative curation and conversation, and then um, time for question and answers. So when I um, started thinking about what I was going to share today, I always think it's a good idea to start with a definition. So we have a common view of what things are. And um, the Oxford English Dictionary is the place I usually go for definitions. And the definition of presence is the fact or condition of being present. So sometimes it's tricky when definitions have the, the word itself in the definition that to me leads to a bit more confusion at times. Um, but as it goes on, it says the state of being with or in the same place as a person or a thing, attendance, company, society, or association, usually with, of, or possessive, indicating the person or thing that is present. And if you look at the definition of present, it's a person's presence. So we're getting a bit circular with the meaning. So I went a little bit further to another favorite resource of mine, which is the synonym finder. And these um, words start to get help, I think, us get a little bit of a better idea or some words in our mind that we can think of um, when we start to, to question what is presence, existence, entity, substantiality, subsistence, life, being, um, residence, all of these terms kind of float around this idea of presence. And so the, the presence I'll be speaking about today um, is around online teaching. Um, and this is something that many of us, almost all of us probably are doing right now um, and have been for the past several months, almost a year now, um, given the pandemic and what's happening in the world right now. And my beginnings with um, online teaching began in about 2001, when I started my master's degree uh, online at Michigan State University. And my master's thesis was called The Other Side of the Webpage, Attempting to Be an Online Professor. So I, as I was preparing for this, I went back to sort of see what I wrote. You always, some, at least I kind of cringe sometimes going back and looking at some of the older things. Um, and at the end of the, the thesis, I said, what, as I was concluding, what is life like on the other side of the web page? It's a lot different than I had anticipated. <laughs> Not necessarily good or bad, but, but different, um, of course. And the, my thesis here was um, creating a course, an international um, baccalaureate course in technology um, for high school students. So I was um, back in 2002, um, trying to teach um, online. So I've been doing this for quite a while, almost co coming up on 20 years now, um, which doesn't make me an expert um, by any means, but it has given me a lot of experience. And um, going through that, that thesis, I kind of dug through some of the literature that I was looking at, and which I hadn't visited in quite a while. And a lot of it is similar to what we are seeing today. Um, back in 2002, this was some advice from the National Education Association um, and some other larger entities that um, talking about the student role and the instructional design role. I think it's very interesting that it had instructional design and it didn't necessarily have a, a faculty or teacher role in there which is interesting, but a lot of discussion about active participation and discussion and um, intellectual property and how the importance of instructional design. And another a guiding piece of literature that many people um, go to when it comes to online um, learning or teaching is the community of inquiry framework. And um, along with that, that was back in 2000 when that came out. And then more recently, Dunlop, Verma, and Johnson have layered on Kolb's educational experience um, framework on top of um, 
the community of inquiry framework um, to create um, their um, way of looking. And again, all the slides that I share have links to these resources as well. And we'll have some time to explore this. So I'm kind of going, going to kind of go through this a little bit quickly. Another useful um, piece of literature that I see cited is from uh, Cormier and Siemens. And the this table is a really helpful one. I'll get myself out of the way. Um, about the roles uh, that we play um, as educators in online environments. So we have roles of amplifying, curating, wayfinding, aggregating, filtering, modeling, and staying present in online environments. And I, I quickly swiped through my first introductory slides, but I did sort of a, a play on, um, on the title when we're talking about online environments. I don't think that what we're talking about today is solely um, tied to teaching online. I think a lot of these principles can be used in hybrid, synchronous, um, synchromodal, all of the words that we're using to describe educational experiences now. I think thinking about presence and the role that, that we play and that our learners and the educational communities play is important as well. And of course, um, we can't discuss anything right now without discussing COVID. It has tremendously changed um, what's happening to, to us um, and to our educational environments. This is a tremendous resource that came out, one of the very first that came out around um, teaching during the pandemic. And um, I think there's over 80 articles um, and resources in here across the educational spectrum. So this is a, a tremendous, tremendous resource. And there are quite a few articles in there that talk about um, presence and this idea of presence as well. And then one a little closer to, to home in Ireland, a recent article from Dr. Tony Hall and colleagues, um, which looks at um, using mobile learning in the pandemic across six different countries. And again, presence and teaching is sort of embedded into that resource as well. And as I was, um, scrolling in the middle of the night. I couldn't sleep very well, nervous about today and all sorts of things that are happening. Um, I came across this beautiful article that um, Enda um, Donlin tweeted out and it's the loneliness of a long distance teacher. And I think when we talk about presence, we also have to think about um, absence as well, the opposite sort of, of presence. And um, this we'll have time to explore again in a bit, but it's a, a really, um, nice article, blog post rather, sort of reflecting on um, what it means to be absent and missing from each other, even all the while, while we're still with each other, there's 53 of us together right now in a space, but um, how do we deal with sort of that, that absence and the aloneness um, surrounding our spaces? So in my own education, I've had an extraordinary like extraordinarily lucky to have um, some inspirational um, mentors and those have had profound effects um, on how I myself educate. A few of them I've never met in real life, but these were my first mentors in presence. Um, and whenever I was watching um, Sesame Street or Mr. Rogers, there was no doubt in my mind that um, they were talking to me, they were, they had presence, even though they were not there, right, at the same moment. So what, what sort of cues can we take from those educational um, experiences? And also, these are some of my, um, my teachers, my mentors, Carrie Heater on the left, who um, was my professor um, online, she, she taught me everything I know and about teaching online. And um, Gary Reed, who was my mentor and, and um, Dave Legg, both in radio. So I started my career as a disc jockey. So I knew sort of intuitively about audiences, but being alone and talking to, um, to crowds. And then um, Sandra Moulin, who was my French teacher, all sort of taught me how to be presence, um, present while I'm teaching. So I'll talk about a few things I do, but I'll talk about what I do. I really haven't explained who I am. Um, if you don't know me um, personally, I'm a clinical associate professor at the Mary Lou 
Fulton Teachers College at Arizona State University. And I teach in our educational doctorate program in leadership and innovation. I teach a handful of courses. I teach our qualitative methods course um, and um, reading the research. Um, and I teach completely online. So I live in Michigan and uh, work in Arizona. And I've been doing that prior to the, the pandemic as well. And pre-Arizona State University, I was a faculty member at Michigan State University. And there's a, quite a few people I'm seeing in the participant list that were former students there um, and taught in a Master of Arts in Educational Technology program. And it's just absolutely tremendous to see some of those faces and names um, popping up as well. So a lot of my career in life has been around um, teaching, um, teaching online, educational technology, um, and all of that. So let's frame presence. I, I see when I'm sort of framing the conversation around presence in a few different ways, um, from teacher to student, from student to student, and student to content and the course. And I think there's all different ways that we can um, discuss and frame presence in each of those. And I'm going to go through here and give you some examples of how we can build community with, by, and between each of those entities. So this is a picture of a wheel of technology that ASU um, has in their resources. And it's, um, you're not intended here to see what's in the, the little squares and circles or the um, rectangles, but it's it's a, a list of all of the technological tools that we have available to us to, um, to teach with, which can be extraordinarily overwhelming. And, um, and a quick side note, a lot of my work is guided by um, the work of critical digital pedagogy, um, Stommel and Morris, um, and, and really thinking about not just you know, picking from tools and the latest and greatest, but really thinking critically about what I'm choosing to embed and use in my classes, which increasingly is less and less technology <laughs> as I get um, older and more critical as I go along. Um, so let's start with building community with the content, which was a concept that was taught to me by um, Stephen Weiland uh, at Michigan State University. And um, he um, teaches online and his online courses, he has zero interaction between students. He doesn't believe in having students interact with each other, um, but has, wants them to interact with the scholarship and with the ideas. Um, and I think that's a really interesting way of, um, of framing and thinking about orienting students to, um, to the content. And one of the ways that I embed that, um, and we in our program embed that, is through uh, making the authors visible. So um, this is a, a screenshot here from one of our course pages where we're listing the readings. And so instead of just listing, read the Sillier's article, read the Lee article, we have pictures of the, um, of the authors to make them human and visible and um, also give some context as to why we're having them read the content um, and then eventually get to the, the resource itself. So it's helping the, the students see um, beyond just text that's sort of flying at them and, and seeing them as a part of a, a greater community. And next, there's the building the community between the instructor, which is where I put a lot of my, um, my own effort. So I'm going to kind of run through a whole list here of some of the things that I do. And there will be lots of time to discuss um, as we go along as well. So one of the first things I do um, at the beginning of every semester is a getting to know you survey. Um, and I um, not only ask where they live, and I create a, a nice little map like this so we can see where we are, but I ask a really important question about, um, is there anything that I need to know in order to, um, to help you better this semester, to help you learn? And that is such an important question and really sets the tone for the whole rest of the semester. Students will tell me things, and especially now, with jumbling um, homeschooling and working from home, all of these 
contextual things that I wouldn't necessarily know um, via email um, or discussion board posts online. And that immediately cuts through and allows me to sort of humanize our interactions and um, bring things up um, with the students as we're discussing um, content that they have sort of preloaded in the survey and that that really helps me connect um, with them um, faster. I do, um, I'll go back to the critical friends in a little bit. Um, I do weekly videos. I've been doing the weekly videos for ever since I started teaching online. Um, and the weekly videos, um, they are really, really brief um, videos and um, they um, just kind of go over the context for the week and allow the students to see me as a part of um, what is happening in the course. And I'm keeping an eye on the chat here and um, Neil asked, uh, are they always happy to respond to the questions to the surveys? And um, for the most part, they are. Um, there'll be a couple of times where I have to send reminders and things, but um, they're, they're very happy to, to share. And um, another thing that I do, um, and this is some, a new practice that I started um, based upon something I learned from Dr. Mirka Koro, a faculty member, is this idea of a, a flipped discussion. To me, discussion boards can get um, exhausting <laughs> to read and for students to participate in. Um, and this question assignment, um, the students are asked to read the, um, the readings for the week and then just post a question. And then I go through and sort of organize the questions and record all of the answers. Um, and this is in my qualitative methods course. And the video will end up being between 30 and 40 minutes long. So it kind of breaks some conventions about length and what's expected there. But I am talking to the students. I say their names as I'm going through the, the questioning and kind of having them talk to each other if they have similar questions. And it really has become sort of a, a signature piece of this class and really um, one of the most important pieces of my qualitative methods course um, and, and really helps have that sort of robust discussion, but without having to spend hours and hours sort of going back and forth. And this is just a screenshot here from um, the Google Doc that I use and I kind of highlight, um, you know, questions and, and talk through this document um, as we're going along. Um, I use Google Docs extensively um, with my students. Um, OneDrive is another option as well. Um, it allows us to um, create comments and, and have that discussion within the, um, within the work that they're doing. Um, audio feedback is something that I've used for quite a long time as well. And um, it's a nice break sometimes from text-based um, comments, especially on long um, pieces of writing. And they're, they're sort of hearing me walk through. And I'll just pull up Zoom just like this with their, um, with their document and talk through and then record to the cloud and, and send them the recording and we can um, dialogue that way. All of these, by the way, link out to, um, to blog posts and further information. I'm putting a link to the slides um, in the, the chat again. And um, socially sourced feedback is something I haven't done in a while, but I have done in the past. And it's a really uh, another, again, um, different way of sort of um, having the, the work in class have meaning beyond the class itself. So um, you can think about not just you being the person that gives feedback and sometimes peer feedback can get a little bit um, overused as well. But if you have the ability to move beyond your own classroom and have um, a group of either peers or um, others share or have a lot of connections today, if anyone's interested in that, you can make those connections across um, spaces as well. And then um, 
we just started at ASU using Slack. Um, and um, I've also been using Twitter for quite a long time. And it's another way um, of sort of escaping the presence and bounds of the course management system and having um, myself be present. So all of my office hours are, um, are on Slack. Students can just um, ping me and I can pull up Zoom um, at any time they need. And so finally, just a couple thoughts about building community um, between students. We use a concept in our EDD program called critical friends, um, where they are um, paired with uh, another student and not just told to give feedback, but we give um, quite a few resources around um, how to give feedback and especially at the doctoral level, the type of feedback um, that is needed. And sometimes those critical friend groups expand out to writing groups and communities of practice, which is nice as well. We hold um, Zoom um, fishbowl discussions called leadership challenges. Um, and the, the leadership challenge are four week sprints where um, we put students in groups. I put them in groups based on time zone um, to make it easier. So not necessarily interest based, but convenience based for, um, for those classes, which is another sort of one of those hidden tricks, I think, that um, goes into the development of online courses where we're really thinking, I am trying to think very carefully about students' time and all of this stuff. So for the challenges, they're based on time zones. And they hold a conversation and record that conversation. And then the rest of the class watches um, the following week. Um, that way, it, it gives them a chance to have an audience for their conversation. Um, we're trying to, again, manipulate time so it's not too exhaustive for everyone at the same time. Different groups and different weeks are um, required to record. And then um, they implement uh, a mini challenge for themselves. They say, I want to change a certain behavior. Or I want to observe something. And then they follow that challenge through and reflect upon it at the end of the four weeks. And then here's just sort of a smattering of other um, tools that I use. I mentioned Slack, Slack already. Flipgrid is a, um, a visual discussion board. And we've started using this more. We started using it for introduction activities, but um, students have said they enjoy that. So some of our um, message board based discussions are moving to Flipgrid. Students have options. Uh, I think options are really important as well when it comes to um, to creating presence and sort of facilitating that. Um, and Yellow Dig is a tool that um, is, I don't know what it would be analogous to, but it's its a lot nicer, I think, than some of the um, embedded content management system forums, um, discussion forums. It's just another way of sort of sharing and discussing. And then, um, as I mentioned, Twitter, our hashtag, I've created a podcast for our students as well. Um, all different ways for different modalities of um, accessing me as a, um, as a faculty member and also the program as well. And so kind of putting out all those opportunities to connect with each other. And to me, um, I can't talk about presence without talking about care. I think those two things are braided tightly together. So a few um, quick resources around there. Um, the academic history of care, um, always have to mention, mention Carol Gilligan, Nell Noddings, Tronto, and Leger. And all of these link out to some of those original resources. And then um, again, some more contemporary care conversations. Um, Catherine, I think, is here with us this morning um, as well. Mahabali, um, Mia Zamora, um, all of these um, individuals are um, talking about care, humanizing online learning. And um, I promise you all are going to have a chance to go through these. And this is a, a ton of resources here that link out to all sorts of resources around um, care and embedding that into the online environments where we are teaching. Care for the students and care for yourselves as well, which is a really important thing um, to consider. All right, so I've been talking for about a half hour now, and it's time to have a little bit of crack 
and that's fun um, for those of you who are not familiar with the Irish um, term. So what I've done here is um, intentionally given you a choice. Um, I know it can be sort of jolting to um, be thrown into a, um, a breakout room without knowing who you're talking to. So I wanted to be um, a little bit sensitive to that and to give us an opportunity to find an affinity group. So I am going to pull up here and you can pull up as well the Google Doc. And let me share that screen with the doc and tell you what we're gonna do next. All right, so a few different options for participation this morning. Um, I know sometimes um, you don't wanna to talk to anyone else. So there is a quiet room for that where you can go and maybe um, some, some of the links that I shared um, were interesting. You can pop into the quiet room and work independently. Um, the one thing that is important though, that's going to come out of our sharing are collective resources. So part of the, um, the purpose um, and the mission of this, um, our session is to create, um, sort of collaboratively try to create some resources that live beyond this session. Um, and there's a ton of intellectual um, powerhouseness in um, looking at the list of names here. So um, the quiet room, we'll go back to that. The quiet room is, is if you need the space to process. There's a pro tip room. If you came this morning to sort of, you've got some great ideas you wanna share with others, pop into the pro tips room and uh, you'll be able to chat in there. There's a learning from failure room. If you've been trying some things and they're not quite working out, that's the room for you. If you're coming to this session this morning from a research perspective, looking for some more scholarly resources around um, presence and the idea of presence in online learning, research creation is the room for you. Um, there's a primary, secondary, and tertiary room. So if you want to speak with um, others that are in those different um, sectors of education. And then finally, there's an instructional designer's room. And the um, what I would like you to do once I open up the breakout rooms is pick a room that um, that interests you and then you know give it a minute or two for people to settle and get into the rooms and then um, someone can volunteer to sort of moderate um, or lead the discussion and then also it's always really nice to have a couple people um, volunteer to uh, take notes as well and I'll be popping in out of the rooms, um, but you've got um, within each of these Google Docs, um, you'll have the directions um, replicated and you'll have a space to talk with others that are interested in um, similar things. So without further ado, um, and I'm seeing some notes, the, the quiet room, if, if you um, just wanna to go to a space where you need to be on your own, the quiet room is a totally perfect place for you to go. Cause I know everyone is in many different spots right now. So I'm going to stop sharing and open up um, the breakout rooms here. And you should be able to pick your own room. If you have an older version of um, Zoom, you may not be able to move. So just pop on your mic and let me know where you'd like me to move you to. I can move you around. Or um, if you wanna put it in the chat, I can move you in the chat as well. And we will let you break out. Can you say again what the instructional designers room is? Sure, that would be um, for those that are instructional designers or curriculum designers to talk about resources um, that they can share with each other and with other um, community members. Okay, cool. Lee, would you just mind moving me to the tertiary uh, group there? I don't seem to be able to move. Or the yep. option is not available. You got it. Let me find you here. There you are. Tertiary. 
you should you should get the message now. Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. Yep. Bye. Hi, Lee. It's Pam here. Just wondering if you could move me to the tertiary room as well. It's great to see you today. Great to hear from you. Oh, it's so good to hear your voice. <laughs> I missed the, the very early part of your session because I was teaching, but um, so many things. My head is buzzing with all the things I need to, to look at. It's I'm recorded. So we'll, make sure, we'll make sure to get that to you. Um, Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Let me check the chat here. Hi. Um... Hi, uh, can I ask, is primary, does it mean like for primary school kids in school? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, right. Uh, thank you very much. This is interesting. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I moved. Sorry, Lee. Bridget Crowley here. Would you mind moving me to the tertiary room? <laughs> Bye. You bet. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Trying to peek at the chat too. If I haven't moved you and you need to move, let me know and I can. Uh, Marie, did I get you? No. Neil, instructional designer. All right, if anyone else is stuck, let me know and I can move you around. Hello, Lee, uh, this is Ashlyn here. Um, could you please move me into tertiary? Yes. Thank you. Um, Hi, and... could you move me to the same room, tertiary room, please? Sure, who is that, Tatia? Tatia, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Lee. Hopefully you can hear me. And um, I will share my screen um, and we'll start with the instructional designer group. It was interesting to see where people were going. Um, they didn't go where I thought you were going to go <laughs> based upon some of the initial interest. I thought we'd have a, a ton of people in the um, the research group, but we only had one or two. So you all found, eventually settled on a place, but we'll go to the instructional design group. And if you don't mind um, someone volunteering to kind of give an overview of what you discussed. I can start us off since I was capturing the notes and then I'll, I'll invite my group members to, to add anything additional if there's something I missed. Thanks, Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So um, we kind of started off a little bit with a, a loose conversation around um, obviously the impact that COVID has kind of had in terms of the adoption of different digital technologies. So um, in many ways, I think across our institutions, we've seen um, kind of by, by necessity, this has forced people out of their comfort zone to try some new things and to think about kind of their teaching and learning practices differently. And um, obviously there's a lot of challenge, challenges related to that as well, but um, that there's, there's benefits too, um, and that we see people thinking about kind of their practices differently. Um, we really kind of focused a lot of the conversation around different technology uses and kind of what, what the intent and purpose behind adopting different technologies within your classroom space is going to be. Um, we talked kind of around, around the space that um, a technology is not always kind of, it depends on kind of what problem or what problem you're trying to resolve. Um, and that kind of technology for the the sake of technology um, is not, not something I think we want to focus on, but rather the ways that technology can address and focus on a particular problem. Um, and so uh, let's see what else. We also talked a little bit about kind of video production and how um, I think it was Neil that was mentioning kind of the, the preference sometimes students have for things that are a little bit more personal rather than kind of highly, highly produced. Um, and then toward the end, we kind of, oh, um, the other piece I think to note too is um, we talked about kind of the, the 
synchronous challenges of Zoom and a little bit of that, that Zoom fatigue that everyone is feeling and how um, whether or not, because you feel like you're presenting constantly on Zoom, whether it kind of detracts from paying attention to kind of those social elements of presence in the space as well, because as we all know, you're you're kind of on the spot when you're recording and we're, we're conscious of ourselves in a way that we sometimes aren't in an in-person classroom. Um, and then we kind of concluded by just talking about different technologies and tools that have been particularly useful for us. So things like Padlet, um, Jamboard, et cetera. Um, any of my group members, anything to add? Maybe just about BIVEG with the hologram technology and the insight that children view hologram technology differently to adults. I thought that was really interesting. Yep. Um... I'm, Thank you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No. Um, regarding the the how the children view the um, hologram differently, I also found that very interesting. But I I didn't had that um, thing in my mind before. So that is quite a re uh, revelation, I guess. Sorry, my English is bad. Um, no, no, no. You're great. I would like to uh, pick that up. Uh, if some it, if the person who mentioned that could forward me some articles regarding that, I would be really grateful. Just throwing it in there. Things sure, I can do my best. Um, it's gonna be uh, more probably around AR and VR environments and projection and how children respond to that, but I should be able to come up with something if, if we're sharing emails. <laughs> Thank yeah, fantastic. and that brings up a good point. You can um, either use the chat to, to share information or um, if you want to put your information in the Google Doc, um, we'll keep, I'll keep the room open for a little bit after time is up. Um, if there's any lingering um, chat that needs to happen, um, we'll be absolutely have time for that. I want to, speaking of time, just want to make sure we get to the other groups. Um, there are two more to go through. Let's start with the learning or move on with the learning from failure group. Anyone want to give us a recap? I, I can do that. And again, um, if anyone wants to jump in, please do. Um, I was just trying to kind of highlight on the document some of the key things. Um, when I take notes, I tend to just go all over the place. Um, so I, I, I guess um, this idea of failure is what brought us to this room, um, but I, our our goal really was looking for solutions and um, not just to commiserate, <laughs> um, but I think there's just a was an overall sense that um, this new experience um, a, a couple of things to to point out. But for many of us, this new experience of teaching and learning online um, that we brought the third bullet point there that we have to be careful about the assumptions of this that the students are bringing to the classroom. Um, what their experiences are, what their resources they have. We even talked about, you know, the issue of students not turning their cameras on. Um, but, you know, what's in the background of their household? What kinds of noises might they be trying to hide or conceal? Or, you know, maybe they don't want anyone to see their background. But um, just... Uh, this, these assumptions that this is the digital, um, the native, um, what am I trying to say? The digital natives, we assume that they have all this experience and they're just gonna immediately quickly figure out how to do the technology, use the technology without any kind of direction or role given to help them um, with that. Um, the idea of uh, just simplifying and selecting a few tools, um, there's so much out there to choose from and that it can be easy to use too much too quickly and bombard students. Um, and um, I, I guess I, I sense that there was um, some talk of empathy in terms of um, helping students see what we're seeing as the instructor. Um, you know, when you do have a screen full of just black labels with names on them, um, that um, kind of trying to build a two-way street of empathy where students see what we're so seeing and, and we also are um, trying to understand, you know, their situation and, and what, um, you know, what they're bringing to the table in this online environment. Um, so I, is, does anybody else want to throw anything in there? <laughs> 
Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. And it's great to see you. Another yes. old blast from the past as yes. well. <laughs> I'm just looking at the time. Um, and I want to just briefly get to the um, tertiary and secondary group. I know there was a ton. They did a phenomenal job here of um, collecting their resources um, for us. Does anyone want to give a quick recap from the um, tertiary group? Yeah, I'm happy to do that. I had thought I wouldn't be available for it because I need to leave it too. But as you come to it uh, now, I suppose we we took a, a, a view of uh, just maybe everyone kind of taking a step back and putting in resources and challenges and successes. So we spent about five or six minutes doing that. And then we came back and we talked about them. So we were just kind of getting into the meat of the, the talking about them because there's so much in there. And I just mentioned in, in the group, you know, I couldn't get into the document and then I, I refreshed it. And by the time I came back in, it was literally just being populated at a rate of, of knots. It was just unbelievable just to see what happened. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to, I suppose, continuing the conversation because I would say from our group, we're definitely not done. I think, I don't know what other people felt in the group, but but that would be my sense of where we're at. I suppose one of the things we did talk about where we, we focused on talking about the challenges and we had hoped to talk about the successes as well. Um, but we, you know, we started talking about the challenges and, you know, things about the community and reading the room and, you know, all those types of things that are difficult in the online space and how we could maybe get around that. So some really good conversations that I'd like to continue, certainly. Thank you, Pam. Appreciate that. And I mean, it, it you know, once we think 25 minutes sounds like a, a lifetime and then you get in there and it's um, it goes in a minute <laughs> and so quickly. Um, and Speaking of that, our time here has gone super quickly as well. I'm just trying to bring up the rest of my, um, the slide deck here, if I can bring it up. I might stop sharing just to get everything back together for a moment. Um, and I see people are, are starting to leave. Before um, you leave, I just wanna pop in the hashtag there. Um, I was not doing a good job of triple multitasking all over the place. So I was not tweeting during this, but a handful of people were. Um, but I also think everyone was sort of embedded in the, the conversation too, which is phenomenal. And so um, I'd like to sort of end A with a thanks. Uh, time is precious. And I really appreciate you all coming together this morning and afternoon um, around this topic of interest. I appreciate you jumping in to the, um, the breakout rooms. Um, and, I, I popped into one that said, you know, we need to scaffold the breakout rooms before we do it, especially with students. Hopefully there was enough scaffolding um, with what I gave you, um, but that is a really important thing. We just can't kind of throw people um, out without sort of setting um, rules of engagement and things like that. Um, so if you need the link to the slides, let me know. I can report, uh, repost those in. Um, I will take, um, we've got a couple minutes for questions. If there's um, anything in the, the last couple minutes here, um, burning questions you'd like to discuss. Other than that, um, I am always available um, via email or Slack, love collaborating. Um, and I, I, I think I get a little emotional and choked up because um, seeing all of you here together is sort of evidence of, of what good can come from from sharing because you're all an amazing group of people meeting new people through this as well and just want to um really thank you for your time this morning thanks lee thanks lee. no thanks to you lee it was great to meet everyone thanks, lee. Yeah, thank you that was excellent thank you leah appreciate thanks, it leah. Thanks, thank you thank you thank you very much thank you thanks